what's up you guys? My name's Sydney and today I'm here to bring you my September wrap up. For September I read a whole shit ton of books so this might be a bit of a longer video but I'm kind of proud of myself for making sure I took the time every night to at least read 20 pages. So without further ado here is what I read in September. I'm going to start with my currently reading, like I always do, just so you guys know what I'm doing for right now until next week when I post my whole TBR. So currently reading, I am reading Blood of Wonderland by Colleen Oakes. Um, yeah, I'm only 32 pages in. I haven't had a lot of time this week to read, so I'm hoping that I get some time tomorrow to read this after I edit all these videos I'm filming today, so that's hoping. And when I do my wrap-ups, I like to start with what I read the first in the month and go to the book I read last in the month. That way I can just end on the note where I remember most of the things. I do make little notes about the books that I've read and I try and give you guys a star rating. The first book I read this month was The Star-Touched Queen by Roshni Tchotchke. Um, This book was an overall overhype for me. <laughs> I gave it three out of five stars. I think that the writing was beautiful and that definitely saved parts of the story. For example, I think that the plot was at some points predictable. The plot twists that were supposed to be shocking to us, for me, were predictable. And because I'd heard so many good things about this book, I just had thought that it would blow my mind and it just didn't really for me. So I would read something else by Roshni Tchotchke, but I will not be continuing with the series or the companion novel. But that's just for me. If you really like this book, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Um, once again, the writing style is beautiful. I just couldn't get into the story overall. After that, I was kind of worried about falling into a reading slump, so I picked up Saga Volume 4, I think? Yeah, Volume 4. And this is by Brian Vaughn, and the art is by Fiona Staples. This is raved about on booktube as well, but unlike the past book I talked about, I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. I've been loving this series so far. I would flip and show you the beautiful artwork, but I really, really do not want to spoil anything for you guys if you're interested in picking it up. As I've said in past wrap-up videos, this series is very adult. It deals with drug use, sex, violence, you name it, it's in here. I like it. I'm not worried about those things, but if you are worried about those things, I would maybe lean towards a different graphic novel series for yourself. Uh, this story, though, I've really enjoyed. The world is so out out there that it just takes me out of my head sometimes and helps me just calm myself down and make me think about other things but at the same time it's not so out there that we can't understand what's happening. I think this one was a really big standing point because of the changes that we see in our characters and the changes we see in the setting. So I will be continuing this series as soon as I get the next volume. I can't wait. I love it. <laughs> The next book that I read this month was actually an audiobook, and that was Everneath by Brody Ashton. I gave this first installment a 3.75 out of 5 stars. It was a perfect audiobook to listen to while on the go. It wasn't too much to think about. It was pretty simple to listen to. The characters were intriguing. The world was intriguing, but not so much that I was stopping and staring off into space just listening to this book. For myself, I think that once again the plot twists were easy to see coming and parts of the book had me rolling my eyes at our main character. She's just not my favorite person, which I will continue on with when I talk more about the series. But the story overall is a fun listen and it's interesting and kind of a guilty pleasure read. After I finished listening to Everneath, I actually read the ebook for Neverfall, which is a novella for the Everneath series. It is pretty short, I think it's about 100 pages, maybe, maybe 60 in there somewhere. And it follows Cole's perspective, which if you've read the series or have read the first book, you would know is kind of like the bad boy. I'll just put it like that so then you're not spoiled. But I... I liked it more than the first book. <laughs> That's such a weird thing for me to say. I liked hearing his perspective and I really think that this novella helped flesh out the world for me. It helped me kind of understand the mythology and where the realism hit and everything like that. I gave this novella 4 out of 5 stars. 
The next book I finished was a physical book, and it was The Diviners by Libba Bray. This book blew me out of the water. It was five out of five stars. Again, one that is very hyped on booktube, which is why I originally bought it, but I can say that it is not overhyped for myself personally. This book combines historical fiction, a little tiny bit of romance, some paranormal, some mystery, you name it, you kind of get a little bit of everything. And I loved it. I think the author does a wonderful job of bringing the setting to life. It's 1920s in New York. There's speakeasies, there's flappers, there's ghosts, there's murders, you name it. There's something for almost everyone in this book. I loved it. That being said, it's super lengthy and I was still wanting more. So needless to say, I will be continuing with the series. This is one that was probably one of my favorites of the year and I will be talking more about it at the end of the year, I am sure, in my top books. After reading such a hefty book, I decided to pick up the 12th book in the series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. I was not as impressed with this book as I was with The Diviners or as past books. It was kind of just a means to an end for me. I still gave it 4 out of 5 stars because of the content matter. For me, this book really touches on the idea of good and evil, like is it black and white or are we all morally gray, which as a middle grade read I think is extremely important for middle graders and for everyone to realize that maybe bad people aren't bad, they're good people who have done bad things or they're just people who have done bad things. That's a personal opinion, but for me I think that this book really brought that to light. After reading the 12th book, I picked up the 13th book, The End by Lemony Snicket, which is the end of the series of Unfortunate Events series. I have enjoyed this series overall. I think I would have enjoyed it more when I was younger, but this was my favorite book by far. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars, which is a bit of a strange idea for some people. This book is very vague. Everything about this story is vague. And I think that if you're looking for a series that's going to give you full closure about everything, you probably shouldn't continue with this series because you're not going to get that. But for me, I think that this left off in a perfect place, in a great way, and I might be picking up his other work. I'm not sure quite yet if that's something I would be interested in, but for now I'm just enjoying the idea of where this story left off and how it left off. So. Yeah, for me I really enjoyed it, but once again, if you're not into a vague ending that doesn't really clarify everything for you, you might not like this series. After that I listened to another audiobook and that was Everbound, the second book in the Everneath series by Brody Ashton, and I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. I liked it quite a bit more than the first one. I think that our characters really expand in this second book and the plot twists were ones that I actually did not see coming, which is always nice for me because I feel like I'm overcritical about plot twists. I tend to be suspicious about characters and figure out plot twists quickly, so for me not to see a plot twist coming is kind of a big deal. Um, <laughs> once again, I really enjoyed it. I think that the author did a great job of describing a different setting where we're going and what we're doing and the adventure aspect of this story was amazing. Right now I'm listening to the last book and I can tell you that the second book will probably be my favorite book in the series. At this point it was a high point in the series for me, that might change, but for me I think of Everbound fondly. <laughs> and the final book that I read this month was Cinder by Marissa Meyer, Yes I'm Late to the Party. But I finally picked it up and I see why this is also a super hyped book on booktube. So as you can see I had a very hyped month. I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. There was one aspect for me that I saw something coming so I docked at 0.5 stars just because it was kind of predictable at some points. That being said, I think that Marissa Meyer does a great job of making a retelling into something completely different. Yes it is Cinderella. But it is Cinderella like I have never even imagined it before. We have a whole different world, we have a whole different universe, it's dystopian, there's cyborgs, there's robots, it's just so much for me and I love it. I cannot wait to continue with this series and I know everyone's been telling me to read it. Thank you if you've told me to read it and I finally did it and I hope to continue on very very soon. That is all the books that I read for the month of September. I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me talk by now, so tell me what your favorites were for what you read this month down below, and I hope to see you guys next week. Bye!